Narad ji is saying, in this bhakti, there are no desires. These desires are of various kinds, material desires. People go to God to get their material desires fulfilled. Somebody said, we think God is a cosmic bellboy. He pressed the bell. The waiter comes. Yes, what do you want, sir? So we think God is also a cosmic bellboy who will fulfill our desires. But the point is, if we go to God with material desires, then it will not be considered devotion to God. Just like let us say your son is unwell. And you go to the doctor. You inform the doctor. The doctor checks out the son. He writes down a prescription. And then you go to the chemist. He fulfills your prescription and gives it to you. You return with the medicine. Now, were you engaging in devotion to the doctor? No. You were dealing with the doctor, but the mind was attached to the son. It was devotion to the son, care of the doctor. Similarly, if we go to God, Oh, my Lord, my son is not well. Please make him all right. My daughter doesn't get married. Please get her married. <clears throat> if we go with these worldly desires to God, it will be the same thing. It is not devotion to God. It is devotion to the son and daughter, care of God. He is only the means of getting this done. So if he doesn't do it, go to somebody else. If Sri Krishna doesn't listen, then go to Lord Shiv. If he doesn't listen, then go to Shani Dev. If he doesn't listen, then go and do some uh, makbara. Lahyo ankh kina andharo jagvaharai chajaya. You know, in India, there are many such dargas. Some mullah died many years ago, many centuries ago. So his darga is there. Now, hundreds of thousands of Muslims and Hindus go there every year. Oh, I don't have an arm, I should get an arm, I don't have a leg, I should get a leg. One of such makbara is in Uttar Pradesh, a place called Vaharaich. The people go. The Tulsi Das says, what are you going there for? Lahyo ankh kin andharo jag Vaharaich jai. You are going there for fulfilling your material desires. When the mullah was alive, he never gave anything to anybody. Now even his bones are not there. What are you going to get? But we people don't listen. You know, in India, all you need to do is to tie a red ribbon on a tree. And you see the magic that will happen. <laughs> Once, one Gurudev had a donkey. So he told his disciple, I am going for two months. You take care of my donkey. Gurudev left. The disciple, with all his devotion, would bathe the donkey and he would massage the donkey and give it an oil bath. Now the donkey was not habituated to such kind of treatment. So he overexpressed his devotion to Gurudev's donkey to the extent that the donkey died. <laughs> the disciple felt too bad that, you know, his Gurudev had entrusted the donkey to him and the donkey has gone to the celestial abode or wherever. <laughs> he buried the donkey and made a samadhi. <clears throat> and then he put his head on the samadhi and was mourning, look, what did I do? I did not take care of Gurudev's gatha. <laughs> Somebody saw this guy with his head there. He thought he is worshipping. This must be some manifestation of the divinity. So he came and offered a few flowers. <laughs> Seeing the flowers, another guy came and offered flowers. Seeing little more flowers, somebody came and offered Dakshana. <laughs> now a stream of people started coming, making offerings. 
and he became busy collecting the dakshinas. <laughs> like, you know, when you go over a hill on the highways in India, at the start of the ghat is a Devi temple. And the truck drivers, etc., before, as they cross the Devi temple, they'll take a coin and chuck it. <laughs> Only thing is, no, no, not even considerate of the pujari. If you are there, you better have a helmet on. <laughs> but anything to get you across. So now people were offering dakshana and he was gathering them. It became a full-time business for him. <laughs> Gurudev returned. Gurudev said, Beta, what are you doing? Now he remembered what had happened. He said, Oh, Gurudev, I am so sorry. You know that donkey you had entrusted in my care, he has passed away. <laughs> Gurudev said, Really? But Gurudev, he was he is a very chamatkari donkey. He is fulfilling people's desires. <laughs> they are coming with material desires and he is fulfilling them. Gurudev said, Look, it doesn't work like this. Ten people come, I want a child. Now two out of the ten get the child. They go and do propaganda amongst one hundred. So hundred people line up to come, I want a child. Now out of the hundred twenty have a child by the same chance of probability, they go and do propaganda amidst one thousand. And that is how this line gets created. So these material desires we take, all the bhakti that is visible in the world. People are going to temples, to churches, to masjids, to gurdwaras, to synagogues. For what? For the fulfillment of those material desires. So Narad says, this is not the devotion that I am talking about. I am talking about such devotion that is free of kamana. And these material things that we ask, whom are we asking from? From he who has the treasure chest of divine goods. And what are we asking from him? These little trinkets. This is like you go to Kuber, the god of wealth, and say, Kuberji, can you please give me a five dollar bill? Kuber will laugh. You have come to me and you are asking for five dollars? One beggar once purchased a lottery. So the correspondents asked him, in case you win the lottery and you get a hundred thousand dollars, what will you do? He said, then I'll purchase a Mercedes and I'll beg in my Mercedes. <laughs> the intellect is at that level. It doesn't go beyond the material desires, we value importance to these material things. But if we want God, we have to go beyond. There was an Arabian sheikh. He had 35 wives. Now when he went to London for the first time and he saw all the goods there, he wrote back to them, what is it that you want? One said, I want a mink suit. And the second said, I want this particular perfume. And the third said that I want these high-heeled sandals and so on and so on. The youngest queen, she wrote the numeral one on the sheet and sent it. So the sheikh got all the goods that the wives had wanted. And he, when he reached, he sent it to all of them. But he went to that little uh, queen himself with a slip and said, What is this one you had written? I could not figure it out. She said, I only wanted you and I have got you. That is how the realm of God works. Do you want all these things or do you want him? So if you wish to attain him, you have to give up all these desires. Our scriptures are so emphatic on this point. They say the thing that is the biggest enemy 
is not your neighbor, your relative or that boss who's always scolding you. It is the desire that is within you. The day you can overcome it, you will become like God. Vimunchati adakaman sarvan manavo manasisthitan taryev pundari kaksha bhagavatvaya kalpate. The Bhagavatam says, Vimunchati adakaman. If you can give up desires, what will happen? You will become Bhagavat Vaya. You will become like God. Now we make the desires thinking they will give us happiness. And the consequence is the reverse. It's like the bee that got attracted by the honey and sat down on it. Without realizing it had got trapped and it could not fly from there. And Ramakrishna Paramahans compares it to the moody. You know, they have these go-downs where the grain that is harvested is stored. And on the entrance, because rats start infesting it to keep the rats out, a little puffed rice is kept in a mouse trap. And these rats and mice come, oh, moody, the puffed rice. They enter the mouse trap to die there without realizing if they had just forsaken that little desire, the whole go down of grain was open to them. Similarly, if we can just forsake these desires, we will get that bhakti which will make us tabd mat and atmaram. That is the purification of the intellect. So Narad says, look, in your devotion, don't desire material things. Second, don't even seek liberation. Liberation is also a material desire. The jnani says it's a spiritual desire. What is the ultimate goal? Mukti. You know, in our Various darshans, Nyaya darshan, Vaisheshik darshan, Sankhya darshan, Yoga darshan. The ultimate goal is Mukti. Sankhya darshan states it, Yoga darshan states it. But the Vaishnava Acharyas say, no, Mukti is a material desire. One devotee says, oh God, I am suffering from poverty. This suffering is tormenting me. Please, free me from this. Give me wealth. So he's asking for wealth. Oh God, give me wealth. The other devotee says, Oh God, I'm suffering from maya, the material bondage. So please liberate me and free me from material bondage. He's asking for one material thing. He's asking for all these material things. Freedom from material bondage. So the path of bhakti is for those who are brave, who are not running away from material misery, who are saying, forget it. I want to serve and give to God. That is why Kabir Ji says, Prem na baadi upajay, prem na heart bikai. The divine love doesn't grow in the fields. It cannot be purchased in the market. Raja Praja Je Ruche Shish Dam Dei Le Ai. Whoever wants it, give your head as an offering. Shish Dam Dei Le Ai. If you wish to receive divine love, give your head to God. What is the meaning of give your head? Give your head means give up your desires. That was the message that was taught to Hazrat Ibrahim by Allah. The story is there in the Christian Old Testament of the Bible. It is there in the Torah and it is highly emphasized in the Islamic tradition. The Eid ul Juha is celebrated to commemorate this event. 
there was Hazrat Ibrahim. So Islam Dharm accepts they have been paygambers before Muhammad. But they say that after Muhammad there was no paygambar. He was the last. So there was a paygambar called Ibrahim. The Jews referred to him as Abraham. Now Ibrahim had a son called Ishmael. So Allah had to test him out. Said, look, I need you to give the sacrifice of Ishmael. So take him and your wife and leave them in the desert. So Ibrahim said, if Allah wants it, so be it. He took his wife and his child and left them in the desert. The child was only five years old. Subsequently, when the child became 15, Allah again spoke to Ibrahim. He said, your son has grown up. He is residing in such and such place because Allah had done the yoga shame. He had maintained him. He is residing in this place. You go and bring him and I need to, you to offer his head in sacrifice. So Ibrahim went, he met his son, he was happy to be reunited. <clears throat> and he said to Ishmael that, look, this is the message I have received from Allah. Ishmael was a very elevated soul. He said, if that is the faryad of Allah, I will definitely, my dear father, you must fulfill it. So the whole arrangement was made of the guillotine. And now he cannot cut off his head with his eyes open. So his son Ishmael was placed there, his head, and Ibrahim closed his eyes with the band. And he took the sword in his hand to chop off his son's head. He lifted the sword and when he brought it down, he found that Allah had taken away the child from there and placed a goat. So the goat's head got cut. Allah said, I was only testing you that can you do sarva samarpan? Can you give up, sacrifice everything for my sake? So just to commemorate that, the Eid, Eid ul Juha. You know, there is one Eid ul Fitr, two main Eids, and the other is the Bakra Eid. So Bakra Eid is Eid ul Juha. Now people forget the essence of why this event was done. All they do is they cut a goat. Now that becomes a parody of the actual thing. Because Allah did not want you to cut a goat. He wanted to cut off all your desires. Khub tarasaya hai, teri khwahisho ne hi tujhe. Khub tarasaya hai, teri khwahisho ne hi tujhe. Ab tu bhi in khwahisho ko kuch tarasti hi chhod de. These desires have made you so anxious for so long. Now release them. Let them keep on yearning and you be free of them. So the scriptures tell us, Yona kamayate kinchit brahma bhuyaya kalpate. Those who give up desiring will become like God. But when we say give up desiring, what does it mean? We should not even desire God? No. It means all desires apart from the desire of His happiness. In other words, all selfish desires. That also includes spiritual selfish desires. You see, if you want divine love, then you have to give up spiritually selfish desires as well. Just like the gopis, they loved Sri Krishna. And Kubja also loved Sri Krishna. The gopis and Kubja both had Madhurya Bhav. They looked at Sri Krishna as their beloved. So what was the difference? Kubja loved Sri Krishna for her own happiness. I will get my happiness from Sri. I don't want anybody else. 
Only Shri Krishna. I only want to see Shri Krishna. I only want to be with Shri Krishna. Why? For my happiness. So that was called Sadharani Rati. She is a devotee. She cannot be criticized. But she will not get that pure love. And what is the nature of that pure love? Naradji will reveal it later on. Tat Sukha Sukhitvam. Swa Sukha Vasana Gandhalesh Shunya Shri Krishna Sukhaika Tatparya Mai Bhakti. Such devotion where there is no tinge of self-happiness, the only desire is for Shri Krishna's happiness. Now that is a very elevated state. That state even big yogis and munis cannot reach without lifetimes of sadhana. So we should not become despondent. How will I become so selfless? Remember the law of incremental growth. One, one step at a time. You keep the perfect goal before you. I wish to reach the highest state of God realization. Doesn't matter if it takes 10 lifetimes to reach there, but we'll not compromise the goal. So keep the highest goal of selfless love and keep taking one step. That is why the importance of seva. If we only do sadhana, what happens? We are not able to transform that inner nature. I want his happiness. The yearning for self-happiness remains strong. But when you do seva, then that miracle takes place. Slowly, slowly you start thinking, his happiness, the happiness of my beloved. And that should remain constant. All the time. Tat sukha sukhitvam. Uh, that will be the gopi prem. So Narad ji has said now, he is now describing this bhakti, sana kama imana in this bhakti. You should not desire because it is nirodh rupi. This bhakti is restrictive. Then in the next uh, sutra, he will explain further this nirodh and he will give another dimension to it. We will go into that in the next lecture. Bolye Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki